26 years, astronomy textbooks described our solar system as having nine major planets, rather than the eight that we see on diagrams today. And that's because in 2006, everyone's favourite icy world, Pluto, was demoted from a major planet to a dwarf planet. The reclassification of Pluto caused much controversy at the time, and even resulted in the invention of a new word, Plutoed, which means to be downgraded. Still today, many believe that this fascinating frozen world should be the ninth major planet from the Sun. But there is also another debate to be had over Pluto, one that seems to have been forgotten, and that is whether its largest moon, Charon, is actually a moon at all. Pluto's history is one of discovery, debate, and a momentous decision that explains how we found a new class of object. But are we looking at this distant world and its so-called large moon in the wrong way? Is Pluto and Charon instead our solar system's first double planet system? You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy my videos, then make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell to never miss an upload. Pluto is classed as a dwarf planet that is located in a region called the Kuiper Belt. Its features include red snow, blue skies, incredibly tall mountains, and heart-shaped glaciers. It is considered one of the most interesting objects in the solar system, but its largest moon, Charon, which is often forgotten about, makes the frozen dwarf planet even more fascinating. Although Pluto was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh, Charon wasn't spotted until 1978 by astronomer James Christie. Originally, it was going to be named Persephone, after the daughter of Zeus, who in Greek mythology was kidnapped by Pluto and made queen of the underworld. Christie proposed it was instead called Charon, however, after the ferryman who took souls across the river Styx to the underworld. But as he wanted to dedicate the discovery of the moon to his wife, Charlene, he pronounced it as Charon rather than Charon. Not much was known about Charon until 2015, when NASA's New Horizons flew past, revealing an unusual surface covered in surprising features. An enormous red formation blankets its North Pole, which was later discovered to be a result of Pluto's thin atmosphere falling upon its frozen terrain. A spectacular canyon stretches more than 1,600 kilometers across its surface. It is at least four times longer than the Grand Canyon and twice as deep in some places. Some bizarre features were also discovered, such as a single mound nicknamed the Mountain in the Moat, as it sits inside a deep hole. At around 1,200 kilometers wide, it is about half as wide as Pluto. In fact, it is the largest known moon relative to its parent body in the solar system. So is Charon actually closer to the classification of a dwarf planet than a moon? And if so, does that make Pluto and Charon our solar system's first double planet system? Binary objects are not rare across the universe. An estimated one-third of the star systems throughout the Milky Way galaxy are thought to be binary. However, double planets are expected to be much rarer. Unfortunately, the criteria that distinguish between a binary planet and a planet-moon system are not well defined. But the most commonly used criteria has to do with how each object orbits one another. Basically, the center of mass between the objects has to lie outside the bodies. When you think of a binary system, you imagine two objects orbiting each other. But what they are actually doing is orbiting the common center of mass. This position is called the barycenter. Every object has a center of mass. It is the exact center of all the material an object is made of 
and an object's center of mass is the point at which it can be balanced. An easy example of this is when you balance a ruler on your finger. But sometimes the center of mass is not in the middle, like a sledgehammer can only be balanced much closer to its heavy end, for example. In space, two or more objects orbiting each other also have a center of mass. It's like an imaginary point around which all the objects orbit, and the Barry center is usually closest to the object with the most mass. In the Earth-Moon system, the barycentric coordinates are about 4,671 kilometers above Earth center, which means these coordinates appear within Earth. They lie below the surface, and so the Moon effectively orbits around the Earth, meaning that it cannot be classed as a double planet system. But this is not the case with Pluto and Charon. Here, the barycentric coordinates are about 2,126 kilometers above Pluto's center, meaning each object orbits a point outside of Pluto. It is this point that orbits the Sun, and it is this point that Pluto's four other moons, Nix, Styx, Kerberos, and Hydra, also orbit. Pluto is just the largest object in a system of objects orbiting a common center of mass. Because of Charon's size compared to Pluto, they were actually considered by many as a double planet before Pluto's reclassification in 2006. But I think there is a strong argument that these distant frozen worlds should be reconsidered as our solar system's first official double dwarf planet system. According to the International Astronomical Union, which sets the definitions for planetary science, a dwarf planet is a celestial body that orbits the Sun, has enough mass to assume a nearly spherical shape, but unlike a major planet, has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. If Charon does not orbit Pluto, then it is not Pluto's moon. And if it meets the first two of the IAU's dwarf planet classification, then it must also be a dwarf planet. And if both Charon and Pluto orbit a center of mass outside of Pluto, then they are according to these definitions a binary dwarf planet system. And they may not be the only ones. It is also possible that the distant worlds Eris and its moon Dysnomia are a double dwarf planet. Orcus and its moon Vanth could be the same, and also Varda and Ilmer. How these double dwarf planets, or even double planets, form is a mystery. But it is thought that much like how our own moon was created in a giant impact event, Charon could have also been created in the same way. Some large object may have struck Pluto long ago and tore out a blob which eventually became Charon. If the galaxy is full of binary stars, then there are possibly binary planets. Within our solar system, dozens of binary asteroids have been discovered, so why not have binary dwarf planets as a category as well? Pluto's reclassification in 2006 caused a lot of uproar at the time, but the truth is, the astronomers who voted to make it a dwarf planet were simply trying to fix a misclassification that occurred decades before. But could this still be the case? Is there a solid argument that it is still in the wrong category? Should Pluto and Charon be in a new category as our solar system's first officially recognized double dwarf planet? In this video, we discovered the bizarre features of Pluto and Charon. But there are other ways to explore these magnificent worlds, such as on a freely rotating globe. And thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Mova Globes, we can do just that. When I'm creating my videos about faraway places, next to me on my desk is a Mova Globe of my favorite small world, Pluto. Pluto is covered in magnificent features, and because Mova Globes use realistic, highly detailed graphics provided by NASA and JPL, when I need a break from the screen, I can peer over at my mini Pluto and see what new things I can discover on its surface. 
And what's even better is that I don't even have to move the globe to look around it because it rotates on its own using the power of light. They do not need batteries or power cords because inside is a first of its kind technology which uses solar cells to generate power along with magnets that react with the Earth's magnetic field. All you have to do is take yours out the box and within a few moments it is rotating freely. And it's not just Pluto, Mova Globes offer over 40 different designs, each replicating world maps, famous artworks and of course my favourite, the Outer Space Collection. I really enjoy seeing my Mova Globe on my desk but it could honestly sit anywhere in the house and still look just as great. For me, the seamless, light-powered rotation is an amazing feature that almost brings the globe to life and makes it feel even more like the worlds they are based on. So if you want to bring a little piece of the solar system into your home or office, check out my link in the description below and use the code V101 to get 10% off 6-inch and 